Hello everyone. Hope you all had a great weekend. And for me, it was a busy one. But being that it is Monday, it's time for spooky places. And this week we have a few, two places in Arizona, starting with the Navajo County Courthouse in Holbrook, Arizona. The historic Navajo County Courthouse was built in 1898 and in service until 1976. Resident Haunt is believed to be a man named George Smiley, the first prisoner legally hung in the Navajo County. The hanging took place on November 11th, 1899, and in honor of the grim event, Sheriff Frank Watton, Watron, Watron sent out 50 invitations that were designed to resemble invitations to a wedding, filled with light-hearted prose. They were duplicated in the local newspaper and then reproduced by the Associated Press and newspapers around the country. The grim humor sparked a little rebuke from President William McKinley to Arizona's Governor Nathan Oakes Murphy. He in turn took his embarrassment out on the Sheriff Watron. New invitations were then sent, most more tasteful, designed in black and white. Unfortunately for prisoner Smiley, he ended up keeping his date with the gallows that day and ever since that time he has been reported to have been hanging around his former place of confinement. According to historical society staff, he wanders about the building, pacing up and down the stairs, making noises, shutting doors, and moving objects about the place. One Halloween, the directors of the Chamber of Commerce and the Historical Society brought a Ouija board into the courthouse to see if they could make contact with the ghost. Stories say that soon after the plachette started moving about, it spelled out the name George. Soon after, a commotion of some sort supposedly took place and both of them left the building in a hurry. Smiley may not be the only ghost who haunts the place. One night a former tourist director and his family were driving past the horror house and happened to see some lights had been left on. After parking in the back of the lot, the director went inside to turn them off. As soon as he went into the courthouse, his wife reported later that she saw a woman looking out of one of the windows. She rushed inside to tell her husband and together they searched the building. However, there was no one inside. Accounts claim this ghost is Mary, a former prisoner who literally died inside one of her cells while she was looking outside. And then, last stop for tonight, the Museum Club in Flagstaff, Arizona. The famed Museum Club was built in 1931 by Dean Eldridge. As an avid hunter and collector, he wanted a unique, unique place to house his hunting trophies and his collection of rifles and Indian artifacts. The building also became a store, a trading post of sorts, and a taxidermy shop where Eldridge could display his own trophies and create displays for others. The building was later sold, and in 1936, after prohibition, a flagstaff saddle maker named Doc Williams turned the museum club into a popular, albeit uh, eccentric, nightclub. It was promoted as the largest log cabin in Arizona and packed in people from all over. It was built uh, around five large ponderosa pines that appeared to be growing right out of the dance floor. In addition to a mahogany bar from the 1890s, those who came to the club to eat and drink occasionally become unnerved by more than 85 mounted animals that were left on display from the tax derby shop days. Locals soon dubbed the place the zoo. But sliding discomforting am animals are not the only watchers believed to linger in the museum club. Over the years the place has gained a gained quite a reputation for being haunted. During the 60s and 70s the club was owned by Don and Thelma Scott, and according to local legend, both suffered tr tragic and untimely deaths. Scott lived upstairs of the shop, and one day as she was going down the stairs, Thelma fell and broke her neck. 
despondent Don later took his own life in front of the fireplace. But according to staff members and guests, the Scots have never left the club. Footsteps and creaking stairs are often heard from where they once lived. While lights flicker on and off, chairs rock back and forth, and occasionally a fire will spring to life in the hearth when there is no one around. While the ghosts are often experienced, Thelma's ghost is sometimes seen as well. One night a customer at the back bar got impatient when the female bartender ignored him and refused to wait on him. Irritated, he went back to the front of the bar to complain and get a drink, only to find out that no bartender was on duty at the back of the bar, and in fact was not even open that night. On another occasion, a customer ordered a drink for the woman who was sitting at the table in the corner. After getting the drink, he walked over to her, only to see that she had vanished in the thin air. <laughs> Well, I hope you all enjoyed the tales for this week, my friends, and wishing you all a spooky night. <laughs>